What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Markovitz once again today bringing you another lecture video. Today we're talking about lesson three, unit three, exposure and focus. So let's get into it. Starting off with exposure, the amount of light that passes through the camera lens. Now, in order to get an image on your camera, the camera needs to be properly exposed. And certainly, you can have an image that is underexposed, where it's maybe a little darker than normal, or you can have an image that is overexposed, where it's maybe a little brighter than normal. Now, I think part of my problem with a lot of movies that came out, especially like in the 2010s, is that they are very underexposed. I remember trying to watch Mudbound on Netflix, but uh, yeah, I couldn't get through the first 15 minutes of the movie simply because I couldn't tell what was happening on the screen. Even if I was adjusting my TV settings, I, like, I don't know. I heard it was good. I heard it was a good movie, but I never made it past the first 15 minutes because everything was underexposed and I just couldn't tell what was happening. Uh, certainly overexposure, it's, it's a very specific look, especially when, you know, maybe you're DP or your director is going for uh, uh, some images that are supposed to look a little hotter than normal, right? A little brighter. And this can be done stylistically. Let's say you have a character who's being interrogated by police officers and they're under these really intense lights. Well, an image like that might benefit from being a little overexposed because the audience recognizes the intensity of the lights that are being used to overexpose the image and we start to feel like the character in the scene. So how do we achieve proper exposure? Well, in order to achieve proper exposure, what you're really focusing on, hey, is a balance between the camera's aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So let's go through each of these individually. The aperture is how much light you're allowing into the camera, okay? You can have a very open aperture, with a small f-stop, or you can have a very small aperture with a very large f-stop. Why did they do that? <laughs> because confusing you is, is, is their game. <laughs> and with a very small f-stop or a very large aperture, you are allowing a ton of light into the camera, okay? And with that, you can achieve some really great shallow depth of field shots, which we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. And with a very high aperture, where you're only allowing a very small amount of light into the lens, you can get some really cool deep focus shots. And we'll talk about that when we get down into the focuses. Um, but yeah, with aperture again, it's just how much light you're letting pass through the lens into the camera. And then with shutter speed, we're talking about how long you are allowing the light to pass through the lens onto the film or onto the uh, digital reader, or whatever. Okay, now typically with video, you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So let's say we're shooting 30 frames per second, which is pretty standard in video, you would want your shutter speed to be one over 60. If you're shooting um, 60 frames per second because you wanna get a nice slow motion shot, then you would increase the shutter speed to one over 120 seconds, okay, whatever. And then you have ISO, which is the camera's sensitivity to light. Now, if you're outside shooting in direct sunlight, you might want a really low ISO because the sun is such an intense light. Whereas if you're shooting in a really dark room, you might want a high ISO because that is going to increase the camera's sensitivity to what little light exists in that room. But not so fast, okay? There is a trade-off here. Yes, increasing the ISO makes it easier to shoot in low light situations, but it's also going to decrease your image quality, okay? It's gonna, it's gonna make your image very grainy and you certainly don't want that. So my advice on ISO is stay as low as your camera can possibly handle. Your shutter speed, you're just doubling your frame rate. You shoot 30 frames per second, shutter speed should be one over 60. And then the aperture, like I said, is measured in f-stops and it has to do with how much light you're allowing into the camera. And when you, you know, are able to balance aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, you can get a properly exposed image. And all of 
this information sort of ties into the next part of this lecture, which is types of focus. Now, with deep focus photography, we're talking about images where everything in the image is crystal clear, whether it's the sky in the background, the buildings in the midground, or your subject in the foreground. And this sort of creates this sense of depth within the image. Deep focus also allows the audience to sort of be the editor of the film. They're allowed to browse freely throughout the image and explore it at their own pace. There's a great French film from the 1960s called Playtime where it's essentially like an adaptation of a Where's Waldo book where everything is shot in wide angle and everything is shot in deep focus and by doing this it allows the audience to have a different experience every single time they watch the film and, uh, and I love it. Uh, again, this is a movie that you could watch hundreds of times and every time catch something different, something that you didn't see before. So how do you achieve deep focus? Well, you achieve deep focus with a very high f-stop, okay, where you're only allowing a very small amount of light into the camera lens. So if you want deep focus, you need a lot of light, all right? That's why it's an easy shot to get when you're shooting outside, because again, the sun is so intense, the sun will allow you to, you know, close that aperture, increase that f-stop in order to give you that deep focus shot. Now, if you want shallow focus, then you're gonna want a low F stop. You're gonna wanna open that aperture, okay? And with shallow focus, only part of the image is in focus. Maybe you have your subject in the foreground and they're in focus and the background is completely blurred out. That is what we would call shallow focus. When the director or the DP wants the audience to focus on a very specific part of the image, then they would put that part of the image in focus, blur everything else out, and now we as an audience are going you know, to naturally look at the part of the image that's in focus, not the part that's out of focus. Why would we do that, right? So it's a cool way to sort of direct the viewer's attention. Now I know what you're saying. What if I'm shooting outside and I want uh, some shallow focus? Or what if I'm shooting inside and I want some deep focus? What do I do? Well. If you're shooting outside in direct sunlight, which is very intense light, and you're trying to get that shallow focus shot where you're allowing a lot of light into the camera, it's gonna be overexposed, right? Because you're allowing too much intense light into the camera. So what do you do? You use a neutral density filter, which is this nice little uh, lens. <laughs> it's like putting sunglasses on your camera. It's this nice little lens, this little adapter that you screw onto the front of your camera and it darkens the image for you, okay? And now you can shoot in direct sunlight with a low f-stop and get that shallow focus. And if you're shooting indoors and you wanna get that deep focus look, you have to increase the f-stop, which means you're allowing less light into the camera. So how do you get that crystal clear shot? Well, you need more lights, right? Put some more lights in your studio and, uh, and you'll get that deep focus look. For Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, he had to use candles that had three wicks to burn brighter in the set in order to get that deep focus look during these really dark interior scenes. So again, you want deep focus inside? It's possible, you just need more light. Soft focus is easy. You just smack some Vaseline on the lens and hey, you have soft focus, right? Or you just you know adjust the focus on the camera and soften it a little bit, make it a little bit more blurry, right? Now you might be thinking, why would we ever want this? Well, a dream sequence might use some soft focus. In this clip from The Conversation, Francis Ford Coppola uses soft focus to show not only a dream, but also a flashback as Harry Call obsesses over the safety of this couple and feeling responsible for putting their lives in danger. Now with rack focusing, we're talking about changing the focus in the middle of a shot without cutting. So let's say you have an image that's in shallow focus, the character in the foreground is in focus, the background is out of focus, and then in the middle of that shot, we're going to adjust the focus or rack focus in order to make the background clear and the foreground blurry or out of focus. And again, this is just sort of uh, one of those techniques that a director can use in order to guide the audience's attention from this part of the image to that part of the image. Your lab assignment for this week, we are gonna record video examples of the four types of focus that I discussed in this video. Deep focus, shallow focus, soft focus, and a rack focus. So we'll take some time in class 
to do all of those. I'll be here to help you and answer any questions that you might have. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something. This week we are going to be viewing Pride and Prejudice, the 2005 version starring Kira Knightley. It's a, it's a pretty, I'm gonna take some heat from this possibly, it's a pretty faithful adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. Maybe it's not as faithful as the Colin Firth miniseries from the 1990s, okay? But hey, for 127 minutes, they do a pretty good job of packing it all in there, even if they have to cut a few characters, all right? Uh, I guess that's it. Email me if you have any questions or talk to me in class. Otherwise, I hope you learned something about exposure and focus today. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.